Hello everyone and welcome to a new video on this channel. This time we're going to test the gaming performance of the Radeon R9 Nano in four different games, including both newer and older titles. We will be looking at 1080p and 4K benchmarks of Shadow of the Tomb Raider, The Witcher 3, Resident Evil 2 and Forza Horizon 4. But before we start, let's take a look at the specs of the R9 Nano. The R9 Nano, released in August 2015, was, along with the Fury X on which it is based, AMD's first video card to use high bandwidth memory, which enables a bandwidth of 512GB per second, almost twice as much as other leading cards of its era. Instead of being placed on the board, HBM memory is placed directly next to the GPU itself. However, this technology was initially limited to just 4GB of VRAM compared to 8GB on the older R9-390X. The GPU core of the Fury X and R9 Nano was really massive in size, and at least for the Fury X, it resulted in an extremely high heat output and TDP. The R9 Nano features 4096 GCN cores, a TDP of 175 watts, and 8.1 teraflops at 1 GHz. I bought the R9 Nano to replace my aging HD7950, which did a quite decent job at 1080p until just recently. For all tests, I overclocked the R9 Nano to 1050 or 1090 MHz, depending on the game, expanding the power limit by 50% and only adding 18 mV, as adding too much voltage somehow throttled the clock speed of my card even when it remained cool at just 70 degrees. All benchmarks were conducted using the Ryzen 2700X with 16GB of DDR4-3000 memory. Here you can see the intro scene of Shadow of the Tomb Raider running on the R9 Nano at 4K with the medium preset. Shadow was the latest installment in the Tomb Raider franchise reboot and features some really jaw-dropping visuals as you can see here even without RT enabled. We used the game's own integrated benchmark to test 1080p Ultra and 4K Medium, always with the Ultra textures enabled. The Medium graphics preset at 4K is mostly similar to the Xbox X running the game in the 4K mode, according to Digital Foundry's analysis of the game. At 1080p, the Nano achieves an average of exactly 60 frames per second. Except for the lows, the Nano performs quite similar to an RX 580 at these settings. At 4K however, while the average remained above the playable 30fps threshold, it dr did drop below that a few times. The experience should be quite close to the Xbox One X, which also aims for 30 frames at 4K. Since 4K is so extremely demanding, it might make sense to drop the resolution to 1800p. Here you can see two scenes, one of which is 4K, while the other is only 1800p. While you can notice a slight decrease in detail overall, the scene here is zoomed in and there's no camera movement. Once you start to play the game, telling 1800p apart from actual 4K is really difficult. On my 4K TV then, you would at most notice that the image is slightly softer than true 4K. Next up, we're going to take a look at The Witcher 3, the only older title on today's list. Using Full HD and the highest graphics preset, the Nano consistently delivered more than 60 frames per second, which is about exactly twice as fast as my old HD 7950. Two runs through the city of Novigrad and a village called Fox Hollow from the expansion Blood and Wine provided the benchmark results. At 4K, a mixture of High and Ultra with HBAO Plus was used. At 1080p, all settings were maxed. So as you can see, 4K was quite playable this time around, never dropping below 30 frames per second, while you can get an almost perfectly locked 60 FPS at 1080p Ultra.
The next title is Resident Evil 2, a remake of the classic PS1 game that was released in 1998. Just looking at the rendition of Leon here, it is quite obvious how far we've come compared to the extremely chunky and low poly character models of the original game. Surprisingly then, RE2 performs extremely well on the R9 Nano at both 1080p and 4K. Although the frame rate remained high, using more than the 2GB texture option resulted in noticeable stuttering and very short frame drops. Upon entering the door to the police station, there was still always a short FPS drop, which explains the lows that you can see in the graphs here. I assume that the game has to reload the interior textures in that situation, but we did not see similar behavior anywhere else inside the police station. The last game on today's list is Forza Horizon 4. The game features a dynamic graphics optimization mode that tries to keep the frame rate at your preferred target. This apparently worked quite well on the Nano, as even when using native 4K and the high preset, the frame rate settled quite close to, or even exactly at 60 most of the time. Even then, the Nano's 4GB frame buffer didn't seem to be causing any issues here whatsoever as the game did not exhibit any stuttering. We used the game's own integrated benchmark tool for the following results. Alright guys, this will be easy. Just don't miss the checkpoint and let's go. At 4K, the Nano achieved an average frame rate of 63 frames per second, with even the lowest drops remaining extremely close to 60 FPS. Surprisingly, 1080p paired with the Ultra preset was more demanding for the Nano than 4K with the High preset. The average frame rate dropped to 56 and it would also drop to the mid 40s a few times. So in summary, the R9 Nano delivered some pretty stunning frame rates at both 1080p and 4K in the four tested games. In many cases, the Nano performs quite similar to the RX 580, for instance in Shadow of the Tomb Raider although the lows are usually a bit lower due to the limited VRAM size. Aside from the VRAM, which is really reaching its limits and keeps you from choosing the highest resolution textures in many games, another problem of this card is the lack of game-specific driver optimization. AMD focuses solely on the RX and Vega lineup now. I would only recommend buying a used Nano if you can find it for around 150 to 170 quid as the RX 580 8GB performs quite similar while offering twice the video memory. Some RX 580s are sold for as low as 220 to 200 quid, making it arguably a better deal. Nevertheless, the R9 Nano still packs a decent punch considering both its age and small size and seems to be able to deliver an Xbox X-like experience in Shadow and Resident Evil 2 while offering twice the frame rate as consoles and Forza Horizon 4.